In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The words that we heard from Genesis, the creation story, are truly majestic. And yet, they do not begin to touch on the grandeur of God's creation. I want to throw a couple of numbers at you. A hundred thousand trillion. A hundred thousand trillion is how many stars we can now see with our telescopes. We don't know if those stars are still emitting light or not because it takes over a billion years for the more distant one for the light from the more distant ones to reach us. And that's all we know about those stars is what we see in the way of light. We don't know a lot more than that about our own solar system. Sure, we've been to, Mar been to the moon and sent a lander to Mars and circled around Jupiter with a, a spacecraft but we don't even know all the secrets of our own planet. For that matter, talk to any doctor and you'll find out there's a whole lot we don't know about our own bodies. We call this the information age, yet there's a whole lot more information that we don't have than we do have. It is what we do have is just infinitesimal. We do know that the forces that God has unleashed are far more than what we can create or even sometimes survive. I'm, I'm going to skip over the sun, which provides us with literally all the energy on the planet, uh, either currently or with fossil fuels that it uh, helped grow thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, there are three that uh, we're all correctly afraid of. Earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. And I've had a little experience with the three of those and obviously survived. The, uh, the earthquake that I experienced in Costa Rica would have drawn huge headlines in Dallas in Costa Rica, it didn't even make the evening news. The, uh, if you live in Dallas, you've had a brush with a tornado, right? Uh, I guess my most dangerous one was, uh, I was 14. It will not surprise you to know that I was out on my bicycle. And uh, I saw a phone cloud headed my way. Well, they teach kids in that area what to do, so I got off the bicycle, got in the ditch beside the road, laid down, and let the tornado go over. It, uh, less than a mile away, it lifted the entire roof structure off the high school gymnasium and dropped it down about 350 feet away. Uh, four years later, I was a, uh, a midshipman in the United States Navy on board the uh, Forrest Sherman DD-931. This two-year-old ship was the uh, pride of the Navy and the first of a new line of destroyers. It was 430 feet long, uh, 45 feet wide, and would do 35 knots. That's a lot of power. We, were, we went down to Rio de Janeiro and came back up through the Caribbean. There was a hur hurricane. They sent us up to find out if the uh, World War II relics that were made up the rest of the fleet could get through it. There's a thing called an inclin inclinometer on a bulkhead in the ship that measures how far the ship is leaning. I saw ours at 45 degrees. 48 degrees, the ship turns over. As you can see by the fact that I'm here, it didn't get to 48. 
Uh, my other two brushes with hurricanes were far less exciting. Uh, Diana and I sat out a hurricane in Brownsville about 20 miles inland and uh, went through all kinds of preparations, boarded up the windows, boarded up the sliding glass door. Well, it turned out to be mainly hot and boring. Uh, it was hot because it was the middle of the summer and the power went off and we had only the water we had stored. The other time was in Port Aransas and uh, on a barrier island we decided that we wouldn't stick it out and we loaded all kinds of things up in our two cars, our photographs, a chest of silver, our German Shepherd, uh, as much clothes as we could carry and headed north to stay with some friends. Well, all that was pointless because the hurricane totally missed Port Aransas by about 150 miles. Uh, seems like human beings do make a lot of preparations that are unnecessary. Uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and Joanna, the other women, had carefully prepared for Jesus' burial. They had brought all the spices to prepare his body. And they met with a power far greater than death, than hurricanes or anything else, the power of the living God to raise Jesus from the dead. This was something they didn't quite expect and had a lot of unnecessary preparations. Jesus' resurrection was a little bit different than ours in that his human body was resurrected. Ours, we will only be resurrected in a spiritual body. We won't have to put up with these bodies then. What have we learned from this? What are we to take away? What does it mean for us? It is a sign of God's unmeasurable, immeasurable love for us. See, I cannot conceive, of the, remember that number 100,000 trillion? How many, I, by the way, if you knew how to count that high and started counting now, you'd never get there because none of us will live that long. It takes longer than that to count it. Because we cannot conceive of that, God came to us, God the Son, in the form of a tiny baby who had the, the same limitations that you and I have, had to go through the same potty training, had to go through the same table manners training, the same training about what you could do and what you couldn't do, how to... Uh, eat properly at the table, all those kinds of things. He had the same limitations that you and I have. S same death that you and I experience. Although I expect that most of us will not be murdered by the government as he was. God did that to enable us to understand in our feeble minds, how much we are loved by God. We are loved beyond any measure. Our ability to understand God's love is about as much as our ability to understand that 100,000 trillion number. So what are we to, to conclude from this? Well, God loves us. God formed us in the womb, just as he did Isaiah. He formed us for a purpose. Each of us has a specific purpose in God's salvation history. I don't know what yours is. I only find out as I live what mine is. But I can tell you that part of it is to shine the light of God's love in this world. 
in a world that is darkened by wars, racism, sexism, hatred, greed. I could go on, but you guys want to get home before midnight. It's to shine the light of love, and the only way we can do that is by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is what we're to go out and do. That's how we reflect the light of God's immeasurable love in the world. Amen.